Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Sales, and I'm very excited to uh, share this presentation uh, with you at this time. I was uh, blessed to be able to go on a, a missions trip uh, to Kenya this past April uh, with Agapan Action. And uh, what I'd like to do is just share some of my experiences uh, with you uh, to hopefully give you some uh, insight into what Agapan Action does and, uh, and uh, my experiences in it. Uh, this is my first mission trip uh, and first time in Kenya. Um, and uh, I can say that was, was very, very uh, profitable for me and spiritually uplifting for me personally. Um, now, I will say that, uh, that this is um, a presentation from my perspective. It's not officially uh, an official Agapan Action presentation. I may get some of my facts wrong, but I'll try and uh, recollect to you as, as best I can uh, from, from, uh, from my experience. So here's a picture of, it, of the team. It was a small team, <clears throat> six of us. Uh, this is Andy and Izzy and Deb and Rose uh, and Diane and myself uh, being a presentation from my perspective. There'll be a lot of pictures like this, me attempting uh, to take a selfie. Um, and I have borrowed some pictures from some of the others. Uh, but again, this is just uh, just from my perspective, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Uh, here's a picture of us at the equator. This was about uh, five days into our trip or so. You'll see a map in a moment. Uh, but this was the best picture I had of, of us as a whole group. Here we are passing uh, the equator. Um, so uh, there will be time for questions at the end. Uh, and I hope that uh, you find this enjoyable. Just a little bit of um, perspective, I guess. Uh, it's nothing like being there to learn the geography a bit, but but here is, is a map, and I, I had it in my mind what it was kind of like. Uh, here's Africa, of course, as a whole, and here's Kenya. Uh, you can see the equator splits the country in half, so half of Kenya is in the northern hemisphere and half in the south, and that's where that picture was taken on the previous um, slide. Uh, we flew into Nairobi, and... Uh, so here's a blow up of, of the map of Kenya. You can see uh, some of the bordering countries. Here's Tanzania down here, or Tanzania as they say it. Uh, Uganda, Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, and of course the Indian Ocean on this side. Uh, a lot of news out of um, Sudan recently, and uh, that's a lot of the uh, people are fleeing Sudan are coming into Kenya. Um, we landed in Nairobi. Uh, we've for our first uh, first part of our trip was going uh, up to here to Nakuru and up into the uh, Eldoret area and up into the the Rift the Great Great Rift Valley area. Uh, we then um, came down to Kisumu, flew to Mombasa, had a, some a, a few days in the coastal region, and then we went to the eastern inland area here and then finished back in Nairobi. Now sometimes this team split up into two smaller groups. And I can't comment much on what the other group did uh, when they were separated from us. But for a lot of the time, we were we were together. Um, here's Mount Kilimanjaro. So it's well known, obviously, bordering between Tanzania and Nairobi. Uh, we were up here very close to Mount Eglon between um, Uganda and uh, and Kenya. Uh, so there's just some of the 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 famous uh, the sites or um, landmarks there in Kenya. So I flew I flew from uh, Frankfurt. I'd gone a week early and spent a week in Germany uh, with my family there. Found out that uh, the, the flights from Toronto to Nairobi went through Frankfurt. So that was a great bonus for me. Uh, coming from Frankfurt, we pretty much flew almost directly south, followed the Nile River a lot of the way down. And here's me in at the Nairobi airport waiting for our driver to pick me up, holding a sign saying Chris Sales. And you, you look for that and you jump in and he takes you to the hotel. And this is the breakfast we had on the first day. Um, fairly typical fare there. Um, we got up early uh, on the second day, really our our, our first day um, in, in in the field, as it were. And we traveled a lot of uh, places by uh, in a van. So here's uh, those of us in the back: Izzy, Andy, Diane in the back, and Rose. Deb was in the front seat with our driver Francis. And we drove from uh, Nairobi to uh, Nakuru. That was our first port of call not a port first town um i thought this picture was interesting i was sitting behind uh francis and uh, this is actually a two-way highway uh they drive on the left in kenya and uh these cars here are actually in the oncoming lane passing these cars and so it's just uh constantly 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 passing um trying to, to make up make up ground as it were and Izzy and i had to laugh at one point not this day but later on on our trip we noticed that we were passing a big transport truck that was passing a transport truck. 
So we were on the far right lane passing to lots of traffic to get to get into the front. I was sure glad that uh, Francis was driving. Um, here's some scenery along the way between Nairobi and Nakuru. You can see it was quite green. It's the rainy, rainy season there in April, and they actually had gotten some rain. I'll, I'll have a slide just on that later on. Uh, and, and Deb quite often was saying that uh, the area was much greener than it had been in the past. So we arrived at the Nakuru Ecclesia. They were waiting for us. Um, here's half half the group. They had the young people sitting near the front. The older ones were at the back. Um, they put on some, some presentations for us, some entertainment. Uh, this young man here sang a song that he had written. Uh, he's studying uh, music in, in, in the music uh, field. And he had written a song that he dedicated to Deb called uh, something along the lines of We Love You Mama. And it was uh, certainly beautiful to, to see how how much they appreciate the work that Agape Action has done for them. Of course, afterwards, all the children want to take pictures and um, were pretty much mobbed wherever we went. And people wanted to, um, to take pictures with us, um, chat with us. Um, and here's the outside of the hall. They had a luncheon. Uh, these are all Agape and Action buildings, as you can see here. Agape and Action does work closely in conjunction with the CBM in each area. Um, but a lot of the buildings are... Um, funded by uh, Agape in Action. They had a Sunday school room off to the right that you can't see in this picture. So they had the main hall, a Sunday school room, and then a kitchen here. And they served us a luncheon and it was, was really nice to get to know some of the brothers and sisters. And fortunately it was quite short. And then we were quickly off that evening um, to the Nima home, which was about maybe 20 minutes, half an hour away. And this is the home of uh, Joseph and Mary. Uh, they are members of the Nakuru Ecclesia. But this is the home that they have. And this is this couple here, Joseph and Mary, are one of the, the earliest people that um, um, that uh, James and Deb had met. And um, they uh, they had a home there. Uh, this is a new home that's just been built by Agape in Action. It's, it's a beautiful home. And uh, there's probably uh, 40 children that live here uh, with them. And uh, this, this, this is actually now a complete farm that's self-sufficient. You can see there's solar panels on the roof. Uh, there's a, a bore with the, the water system here pumped up for providing gravity feed for the home. In behind me here was a stable where there was some uh, some cows and uh, there's chickens running around. Um, the waste from the cows they collect into a, a, a bio, they use the, the uh, bio generating uh, way to produce energy. They grow their own corn, uh, maize and uh, beans. Um, so it's completely self-sufficient, which is which is great. Here's uh, some of the young people who had received uh, these hoodies from um, uh, the Heritage College in Sydney who had changed their logo. And so these were the other uh, ones that they had sent over for the young people here. You can see how happy they are to, to receive these. And this is just another shot of the home as we went for a walk the next morning. A beautiful, a beautiful area um, just north of Nakuru. Um, from there, <clears throat> from Nakuru, uh, we did this drive up to Kamakuya, up in the Rift Valley. There's a number of ecclesias here in the in the Rift Valley. It's gotten so many ecclesias now they've divided into, I forget if it's east, west, or north, south, but they've divvied up the, the territory because um, there's so many ecclesias up there. And you can see again, we're up here, the place we're going to, we could see Mount Eglon in the distance. Um, and uh, we were just right near to the border of Uganda. Um, you can see here the, the highways here. Um, were all fine, they were all paved, recently uh, redone. Um, but again, just those two lane highways and every single one passed through um, small uh, towns, villages, and all along the highway would be markets and stalls and people selling wares. And they had speed bumps, quite significant speed bumps. So you had to slow down along the towns, probably what all these orange sections are here along the, the Google map. Um, and so it took us about five hours or so to travel that 250 kilometers. Um, and at each, each place you'd be going over these humps, people would be standing on the speed bumps trying to sell water or um, fruits or vegetables um, along, along the way. And these were scattered throughout this, this trip. Uh, we arrived to Kamakuya and uh, were welcomed by this large gathering of, uh, of brothers and sisters and young people. Again, some formal presentations, and they wanted to do introductions and explain, you know, we introduced ourselves and a very, very formal, the culture there in, in Kenya. You can see the, the, the brethren are, are in suits. There's some had these um, um, 
high vis jackets on because they were out in the in the area directing people to different ways. It's uh, they're very very uh, formal and take things very seriously. Um, <clears throat> they were actually celebrating this weekend their 33 and a half year celebration of the of the ecclesia here. Um, you can see it's with the with the CBM, the Christophian Bible Mission, with supporting uh, supported by Agape in Action as well. Uh, but they've been there for over 33 years, and uh, they were having a big uh, fellowship uh, fraternal um, this this day, April 9th, when we were there. Uh, I went out to a tent, and we had a brothers a brothers class on some parables. Uh, I believe in this class here was the sisters, and they had a Sunday school. Uh, in nearby as well, because this is very near to the Leela school. Uh, it's all in the same sort of complex. Um, now this this area here, uh, the, the 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 main brother and sister are Justice and Annette, who you may have uh, heard quite a bit about. Um, they had taken in many, many orphans. and uh, when Deb and James met them, they they built them a, a better home to accommodate these these children. There's a Leela home and a Leela school near to the Kamakuya Hall. And then probably maybe 600 meters away is this home where Justice and Annette live. Um, and and uh, um, Kimbilio is also there. It's a dormitory for girls and another one for boys. Um, here's some of the boys. We had a, um, a class in the evening. And here's my high-tech uh, use of uh, paper and tape. We were looking at uh, some parables and really trying to teach them to, to learn to read the Bible effectively for themselves. So looking at the context of the parable and, and looking for echoes, listening for echoes and using cross references and looking for repeated words and phrases, uh, putting ourselves in the story and, of course, drawing some practical lessons. In this case, we were looking at the parable of the, the publican um, uh, and, and the, uh, the, the Pharisee and uh the, the seven word prayer and who went to their down to their house justified so lots of good lessons there about not being proud or, or boastful and 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 uh being humble and it was it was really quite good um in the home there the the these are all older young people that live in Cambilio. they're after high school they're either in college or they're looking for work um there's dormitories for them and a, a place where they cook their own meals the the food is supplied but they must cook their own meals here over an open pit this room often got quite smoky, but here's one of the young people um, preparing the, the dinner. They have a roster. They take turns with the washing and the cooking and the cleaning. Um, and of course, lots of time for fun. Football is the, the most popular sport, uh, it would seem, in Kenya. And um, Izzy and, and Andy did very well competing with these boys. Me, not so much. I tried to, but I felt very much out of place. Not only is football not a sport I'm very good at, but my age is catching up with me as well. But they were very good. They tried to pass me the ball. They're always encouraging me. And, and a couple of times the boys would come up and say, um, football's not your sport, eh? And I would say, no, no, basketball. And, and we would have a good, a good laugh. They were very, very kind and, and um, friendly um, young people there at Cambilio. And Justice and Annette are, are excellent. So, so much enthusiasm and, and uh, heart for the service of the truth. Uh, both with Cambilio, the Leela home, and the Leela school. They're, they're very, very involved. Uh, from Kamakuya, we went further north up to uh, Sabadi. Uh, this is up now into the, um, the Rift Valley area. And here at Sabadi, there's uh, Sister Ruth and her sons, Caleb and Chris, uh, as well as another son, Joseph, uh, is, uh, is in the area. Sorry, not Joseph, Joshua. She has a Joshua and a Caleb, along with a Chris. Chris and I hit it off, of course, uh, because of our shared name. And uh, this is a view from uh, a, a rock ledge above there uh, where they live uh, at, uh, at a home there for themselves and for the young people. We'll show some pictures in a minute. And just up from the Sabadi Ecclesial Hall. A beautiful, beautiful area here in the Rift Valley. Um, lots of pictures taken from this rock outcrop. Here we are in the evening with a bunch of young people that climbed it with us. And of course, loving to get their pictures taken. Uh, this is the, the home newly built by um, Agape in Action. This is the dormitory where the, the children live. Um, and while we were taking sponsorship photos and, and, and um, socializing with the adults, uh, Izzy was always there looking for the children. Um, he'd have a ball in his backpack or some balloons. I think the ball they're using here is just a bunch of rags tied together, and they're playing a bit of volleyball or uh, catching and, and passing the ball back and forth. Um, 
It was, uh, this was seen was replicated everywhere we went. Uh, a, a whole troop of, of young people following Izzy around and, and playing some sort of ball game with him. Then we traveled down the the, uh, the hill in the, the the afternoon. This is the ecclesial hall here at Sabati. You can see Agape in action prominently um, shown there. They also have a, a foundation for a bigger hall that the CBM is working on. Um, we were planning to have a study day inside, but it was too hot that day, so we all sat outside. Here we are along these two edges of the building. Um, they were in the shade. I was standing out in the full sun. We did a, a couple of parables there. They seemed to really appreciate. Um, and Izzy and Deb were, were teaching the young people a Sunday school lesson. And quite often, I think the adults were more distracted by all the exciting things going on in the Sunday school lesson. Um, shortly after this, uh, there was these two um, young girls that uh, were from that area, Christadelphian young people. I think they're 14 or 15 or 16 years old. And uh, for their school, they were going to be running um, the national championships, the 3,000 or the 1,500 meter. And Izzy loves to run. Well, we play football, but he loves to run. And uh, so they were going to have a, a bit of a race, just a friendly race. And uh, Izzy was able to compare himself to these Kenyan runners who were going to be at the national championships. And uh, he was very keen to practice with them and and because uh, all the well-known um, runners in the world, a lot of them come from Kenya. And uh, so we're following along in the car. That's the only way I was going to keep up. Uh, Chris and Caleb are here with us, and we're following them as they as they run. This young boy here, who's also from the Christadelphian home, came out of nowhere, wanted to catch up. He wasn't going to left behind, and he stayed with Isaac the entire way. And it was probably they ended up probably running for three or four kilometers into the nearest town. And uh, where we were heading was to uh, see the soccer team play. Um, this is a team that uh, Caleb manages, and Chris. His brother has helped him start. They wanted to have a, a, a safe place for young people to get them off the streets and uh, away from the drugs and, and that kind of thing. And they tried various means, um, you know, having meetings and this and that. Uh, finally, they started a, a football club. And uh, they've been running for, I think, three years now. And um, I think they call themselves the Agape in Action team, not officially funded by Agape in Action, but I know Izzy's very keen to do some fundraising to provide them with more um, practice balls and good new cleats and, and so on. Um, the team had quite a bit of success uh, last year. They actually made it to some sort of finals for the, for the region and were on um, TV. Uh, and so much so that Caleb um, was actually recognized in the street and uh, it's just been a great incentive. Uh, some of these boys are Christadelphian, not all of them, but they're all very, very um, kind and and uh, interested in in finding out more uh, and and basically be involved in something very positive and and productive. So just a great thing that they've got going on there uh, in the Sabati region. Um, from there, from Sabati, we drove. Francis drove us down to Kisamu, and then we had to say goodbye to him from from there for a bit till we met him again um down in the uh down uh, later when he picked us up but we flew uh from Kisumu uh, as a team we flew down here to Mombasa in uh, this dash eight and it was fine everything was great uh we made it there it was a short flight maybe less than an hour and uh, this is the the coastal region and uh, we had a, a bit of a rest day here just to catch our breath um, after the drive and the flight um, this is us enjoying um, a Western type meal at a, a restaurant there on the beach. I think Andy ordered steak uh, and we all enjoyed um, just, just catching our breath a little bit after our first week um, in Kenya. We actually got to go for a walk on the beach, which was nice. Here's Andy and Diane. Um, unfortunately, a couple of days later, Andy had an allergic reaction to the sunscreen he borrowed from me on this day and he broke it in hives and had to, to take one day of recovery, which was unfortunate because... He's uh, very enthusiastic and uh, it's great with the kids being a, an elementary school teacher. So we missed him for that day. He was down and out. Um, <clears throat> so we did have a day there in Mombasa. Uh, we did go to a, a sort of a, a park with some animals, but I'm going to save those for later because we went to a, a much more, uh, a much bigger one in, in Nairobi later. So we'll save the animal pictures for later. Uh, we were picked up in Mombasa by um, Jeremy and Elijah. And they drove us here um, a little bit away from the coast. It's still called the coastal region, right near to the border of Tanzania or Tenanzia. That's how they say it. Uh, I'll keep saying Tanzania. 
And uh, we were brought to the home in here, uh, Mutangoi uh, is the home where Sammy and Tina are. Um, here's a picture of, of Sammy, very charismatic and outgoing and, and uh, lover of the truth and, and children. This is their home that uh, Agapan Action has helped to expand. There's, a, again, a girl's dormitory and a boy's dormitory. I think this is the dining hall here with a cookhouse. Um, just amazing uh, what these people give uh, for the, the benefit of others. Uh, many, many young people here at Sammy and Tina's. Um, at the top of his house was a flat roof and um, they were wondering where to put us. So Andy and I slept in this newly constructed little room just on top of their house. Um, we had a beautiful view. This is the view that we had from there. And um, they put, of course, some mosquito nets over our beds. And that's where we spent a number of days that we were here in the, the Mutangoi region. Um, we are welcomed by some of the, the girls here who, of course, wanted to find out who we were and where we were from and get their picture taken with us. This was a common theme throughout our throughout our trip. So this is called the coast. It's very hot and humid. Um, it's a, a very different experience than, say, for example, the Rift Valley. So you get the whole range of climates uh, throughout throughout uh, throughout Kenya. Um, Sammy's brother Zach was in this region with him. We'll see him in a minute. And then his other brother uh, Jacob was is in Nairobi. So the three brothers just zealous for the truth and certainly pioneers uh, in in Kenya and and, uh, and uh, fathers uh, with each of their wives in each case supporting them. It's amazing to see all the work that's that's being done. Um, here at uh, whoops, here at uh, Sammy and Tina's home, it's not only the the place for the children. Just down the path, maybe a hundred meters, is an oldies home uh, called Amani, and uh, they have this newly built structure here where the the seniors can all uh, sit and meet. But they also each have their own individual rooms. Uh, in, a, in a building, it's like a dormitory, but divided into individual rooms. There's a separate um, cookhouse there and a dining hall and a sister who's on site looking after these 20 or 23 um, older uh, Christadelphians. Uh, used to be mostly just widows, but they're finding more and more. There's men as well that are they're on their own and uh, need, need care. Um, here's some pictures from uh, Mutangoi itself, where the young people are. In this picture down here, I was... Uh, was talking to my mom because the cell coverage in Kenya is amazing, probably better than my experience here in Canada. You get a SIM card when you arrive at the airport and for 20 or $30, you have this SIM card for the time you're there um, and uh, and you're able to have data. And, and here, literally in the almost middle of nowhere, uh, I was talking to my mom and all these girls came over, oh, who are you talking to? They wanted to meet my mom. We probably spent 10, 15 minutes, them all talking to my mom and uh, saying hello and uh, they're just very very um, outgoing very friendly and very interested and of course so we had to take a picture commemorating our chat here's some uh, young girls wearing uh, manitoulin island christadelphian family camp tie-dye shirts we took a suitcase over of those and they they love getting a uh, very colorful and and uh, new new clothes to them and of course they all help with all the chores the washing and the cooking and and so on it's uh, it's a really um interesting and beautiful concept when you have literally from ch young young children all the way through to, to oldies um, all together on a, a compound that's all somewhat separate and yet connected and uh, quite often I know the the girls Diane and Rose would wander down to the oldies home and and uh, the, the young people would follow along and one time we were there and you know we would sing songs they would tell stories uh, this this uh, brother here gave his sort of life story and uh, it was just a really, really uplifting uh, experience. Uh, while we were there, this is just uh, down the road from Sammy and, and uh, Tina's. We had to drive there, but it's it's connected. It's uh, it's a school, Christadelphian school, Majimoto Springs. Um, here's the, the entrance to the dining and conference area. But uh, over here is the, the science laboratory, the Deb Flint Science Laboratory. So it is a school, a high school. Um, there's a dormitory there. The boys' dormitory was uh, the Isaac Flint boys' uh, dormitory, and the girls was the Ava Flint girls' dormitory. And uh, it had a soccer field and, and then some um, classrooms and administration building all on site here, just a few minutes down the road from um, the, uh, the the compound where Sammy and, and Tina live with the children. Um, so they, Dev had planned a youth camp while we were there. Uh, this was sort of my main 
um, reason for being there was to teach for these three days, a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We finished Monday at lunch. We did a, the topic was David's friends and foes. Uh, the talks were translated. So I would speak a bit, then a brother would translate into Swahili. Uh, we had a Q&A. Um, and once I convinced them that, no, it's not questions and answers about the topic, just the topic, because the brother said to me, well, they won't have any questions. You explained it so well. I was like, no, no, they can ask me anything. And uh, wow, we had just a, a great session here. They asked me literally about everything. We talked about um, um, divorce and remarriage. We talked about how do we know the Bible's true? They asked questions about same-sex uh, relationships. Uh, they were just, you know, they have all the same issues. They have, you know, they many of them have cell phones. They have, they're faced with all the the challenges that we're all faced of, faced with, as well as all kinds of other things like, you know, having lost parents or having living in poverty and so on. So just a, a great group. There's about 200, uh, just over 200 young people here. And Deb said she had to limit it. They could have easily had 500 if they'd sort of opened the doors wider, but uh, they felt 200 was good for, for getting this going this time. Um, of course, being a youth camp, lots of chance for, for talking uh, and socializing, but also the crazy Olympics. So Deb and Izzy organized a crazy Olympics day, a three-legged race, they had so uh, sack races. I did rag hockey in the dining room, um, ballooned between the knees, jumping, um, all kinds of your typical crazy Olympic kind of sports. And the kids just loved it. You had 20 teams, 10, 10 people per team, and this roster of who played who, and uh, it was a really, really fun weekend. I think the, the young people really, really enjoyed it. Now, sometimes when I was here, one of the other team members would be with me. We see Diane in the crowd here. Uh, Deb and Izzy were there to help build Crazy Olympics. Other days, they'd be off doing other things, visiting widows or or doing other visiting other areas and, and the programs that Agape in Action has running. So um, this finished on Monday at noon, and I had a chance. Oh, here's just some uh, some singing. From this group that I thought you might enjoy. Hopefully, this you hear this. Okay. So they do. Uh, they do a lot of singing. Maybe you recognize that as. Uh, um, what a friend we have in Jesus. Um, they do a lot of singing. Uh, they they sometimes sing in English, sometimes in Swahili. Um, there we go. That afternoon, when we finished uh, the Monday at lunchtime, in the afternoon, I had a chance to go up to the Good Samaritan Academy, which was uh, just a little, uh, little ways up the road. Uh, this is for the younger group. This is an elementary school. Um, I was pressed into service here to teach some 12 year olds, which was a stretch for me. Uh, Rose had prepared all the information and the, we did a story on uh, um, the story of Joseph, excuse me, the story of Joseph and the, his uh, colored coat. And she had some things for them to color in and draw. But a little bit outside of my comfort zone, she was called away to do some more um, sponsorship photos, which was really important. But while I was there, I was very blessed to come to their uh, look at their where their bore is the well that they have there it's called rick's well uh, it's named in honor of my father who passed away in 2015 uh, and in 2016 this uh, this well was dug and, and named in his honor uh, which was a really blessing for me to be able to to see that in action and see the value of the water for these children as they you know had their nutrition drink mixed up uh, uh, mixed with the water and and uh, the all those things that went into their nutrition drink um, uh, you know, what they would do without water, uh, they, they wouldn't be there. So it was a, a great honor to, to be there. Uh, my dad was the first treasurer for Agapan Action way back when it started in 2006 or 2007, little Shelburne here in Ontario with Deb and James. And uh, my dad served on that until literally until he died. Um, while I was working with him on the, the end of year, um, reports while he was in his last few weeks of, of life. It was uh, Agapan actually was something always near and dear to his heart. So to be there and see as well was a great privilege for me. Um, <clears throat> the next day we left to left Sammy's place, Sammy in one car and uh, Elijah driving the other uh, for us to go up to Godo. And uh, I have here the craziest drive ever. This is actually the road. Um, this is Elijah's car. I'll have a close up of that in a minute. Um, and he has obviously slid off the road and is stuck. 
uh, when Sammy was the lead car, he came to here and he thought he'd going to avoid this road. He headed off into the bush, literally just into the bush. We've got a picture, a drive of that later. Um, we got stuck as well. So I walked to here and then was starting to walk and I could barely walk along here. I think the, the soil is, uh, the, all the soil is, um, you know, a volcanic ash back in the day. And it's, for whatever reason, it's just really slippery. So yes, you would get stuck in these ruts, but even to walk along the top here, I could barely do it. Uh, it was just slipping and sliding all over the place. So that's what happened to this car, Elijah's car. They're great drivers. They know what they're doing, but uh, the road got the better of them in this case here. Um, so there's Deb trying to be happy in this situation. So we're stuck. And uh, out of the out of the surrounding area, there were just other tribesmen. There were people herding their goats. There were people that maybe had little uh, homes and you know, little ramshack homes here or uh, and they just came out of the bush and they helped us. They dug, they brought their little spades and shovels. They dug away here to free this back tire. And uh, we all took off our shoes, rolled up our pants. There's Zach there. And uh, we pushed the car out and eventually we pushed it out and it came along here. I don't know if it was straddling this. I think it might've been straddling this ditch here and made it. Um, so then we said to the people, well, can you go help us get the other car out? And by this time, uh, Zach had put out a distress call and some of the local brothers and sisters had come. Uh, brothers and uh here's sammy's truck and got turned around and sent out uh, we, he went back here and tried the same pathway that elijah had taken and eventually we were on our way again while we were out there in the middle of nowhere these children arrived um they were herding some goats through the area these are not christadelphian kids um and uh they were quite excited to see some white men and uh, women and uh have their picture taken with us very friendly um didn't know much more English than just a few um, a few words. So we made it out and we got to Godo. Oh, here's a picture of our drive. Now this is actually before we got stuck. Um, you'll hear Sammy here and I and I talking, but uh, he actually got, we decided not to go straight here. So he's gonna head off here into the bush. So this time we made it. Little did we know that uh, probably 10 minutes down the road, we were gonna get stuck, but here we go. This will give you an idea of what it's like. So making a decision where do i go no let's follow this path here out into the out into the field we are now driving in a field The rain is good though. We were all very happy that there was rain. This was usually a very dry area, but it was actually had some color. So apparently sometimes the non-road is better than the road. <laughs> as we drive through a field yeah. to avoid the road. That's the me and Sammy. Is better than... <laughs> oh boy, now we're Sammy. Sammy just said no road is better than the road. girls giving us directions she got us this far it was good well, that's sammy's driving <laughs> here we come we're getting back closer to the road now but not quite there yet <laughs> i don't believe how drive fast he was driving here maybe it's best just to keep going don't lose your momentum I think we're heading get getting back to the road now. There we go. Yeah. Oh, better than Well done. Well done. <laughs> As I said, little did we know that uh, we'd be stuck, very stuck, within about five minutes after this video was finished. So we finally get to to Godo here. This is the Godo, Godo Ecclesial Hall. We're standing in a new hall, and this is another, it's a classroom area, Sunday school classrooms. 
Um, one of the local brothers there um, told me that uh, when my son was Josiah, Josiah was there, he remembered him in, from 20, 20, 2009. And he says that Josiah and Josh, the brother he was traveling with, planted this tree um, and had came up with the idea of uh, of having rain tanks because they they found that they couldn't um, they couldn't drill water. There was no bores in this area that, for them to drill. Interesting little story he, that this brother told me, and it, this could be a uh, legend. I'm not sure, but this is what he told me, that my son had planted this tree in 2009, uh, which is something we did in many of the areas. We would plant a tree as a you know, commemoration of us being there, and um, you know that it would be something that would serve the, the community going forward. Um, he told me that the, the local dam in the area was one that Josiah and Josh, this brother from Australia that he was traveling with, had designed but had not been able to implement. About a year later, the city council, well, town council, I guess not a city, the town village council, um, decided to put in this, the, the dam in this area, the Godo Dam. And um, this brother told me that to this day, it's called the Mazungu Dam, uh, Mazungo being um, white man. Swahili, Swahili for, for white man. So it's the white man's dam to this day. Um, so then from there, we headed up to Ben Zawani, which is just nearby. It's a school. And um, here's just some of the, the people and um, that we met. You'll notice here that uh, they, the Rose and, and uh, Deb and Izzy have these um, Maasai uh, garments. They're just sort of robes that they, they drape around themselves. Um, here's a, a legit uh, Maasai uh, tribesman. Um, Deb's also wearing a, a, a garment here that was given to her here at Godo that was sort of traditional women's wear. They've also given her some some jewelry to, to wear on her head. They're very giving. Um, even Sammy got in on the act here. He's got sort of a, a head honcho kind of um, attire. This man here's name was Daniel. He's a Maasai tribesman. They're nomads. They they have no abiding place. They literally travel from place to place and uh, with their herds and then they move on. But while they're in this area, they've settled a little bit and they're sending their children um, to the Christadelphian school, which is amazing. And uh, so many of these people uh, are so thankful to tag pay in action so much so that they want to give these gifts to show their appreciation. I was just so impressed with how thankful they were for what's been done for them, appreciative of what they have, and somehow wanting to give back. Um, this fellow here, Daniel, um, I found out, some one of the young people that was with us, he said, uh, that guy, she said to me, that guy wants to give you a goat. I, his English was okay, but I obviously hadn't heard that part. Like, oh, that's going to be interesting. How am I, what am I going to do with a goat? And Deb said, Deb said, this is common. They want to give you things. So later, just before we left, we had worked it out that, well, the goat was off in the wilderness some, somewhere here. You couldn't get it right now. But when I come back next time, he'll have the goat for me. So uh, just just amazing. You can see how happy they are. None of this is fake. This is for real. They they put on performances. They danced. They sang. Um, and, and it's just amazing that that these Maasai tribes people um, have have connected with the, the Christadelphians in in the Benzoani Godo area. Um, here is, these are all Maasai uh, women. Um, they've got all the traditional wear. Uh, this stick here uh, is something they use in their dance. It's intricately uh, got beads on it and some some um, chains, whatever. It makes some noise as, they, as they're dancing. And they gave this as a present as well to Deb. So here's just a short video of, of their little um, dance that they did um, when, when we arrived. <laughs> And that was replicated in many, many places, not this exact dance, but dances like they would sing, they would dance, they would um, just really wanted to welcome us and, and share with us uh, their culture. Um, <clears throat> so from there, uh, on day 13 and 14, we left um, the Kamakuya area with Sammy and, and Tina, um, uh, and we were driven, Francis picked us up down here. And we're driven uh, to the Eastern Inland Ecclesias. Now, this first this first trip, we, we wanted to avoid Mombasa. So we went sort of overland here. It was a little bit slower. Um, Mombasa is a big city with all its issues. There's a ferry we had to cross when we came here. 
Um, so anyway, Francis decided to go this way, and I don't think it made that much difference, but it was a long drive. And so it took us well over, I was thinking it was closer to eight hours. This is just Google Google Maps uh, approximation here. So unfortunately, Matendo, we got there quite late in the day. It's uh, it's a home uh, where, where it's a dormitory, uh, where they have dormitory and a hall and a, and a kitchen and, and so on, um, run by a, a brother named Moses. We didn't get much time there. We arrived there late. It was already getting get dark. So we had a few presentations uh, and, and so on, but we really didn't get much chance, unfortunately, there. The next day, we went back to an area near to there, um, uh, Matonia, and there is an ecclesia there as well. And um, Rose and, uh, and Deb took off on these bikes, motorbikes. Motorbikes are everywhere in Kenya. So it's the most common form of transport because they were going to visit the widows that were in a bit more remote areas. Um, Izzy and I were, were left here um, at the ecclesial hall. A um, couple of interesting stories. When we arrived, uh, we were taken to a tree. It was a you know, fine, fine shade. And we were talking to them, some of the brothers and sisters, and uh, we noticed there was a, a goat tied to the tree, and it was kind of bleating away and and crying out. It looked like it was uh, in a bit of distress. And Izzy and I looked at each other and like, hmm, I bet you that's going to be dinner later. And sure enough, Rose says when they came back, we didn't see it because Izzy and I were in the hall here. But when Deb and Rose came back, the goat was being led away, and it was slaughtered and and cooked. And a few hours later, that was what we were eating for for dinner. Um, the Collingwood Christadelphian Ecclesia has a sponsored child, and this is her. I got to meet her here at uh, Matonia. Uh, her name's Mary, so that was very special. Um, and then we went back to um, Paul's place. I think his name is I think his name is Paul Charles, brother. Um, oh, just before we get to that, so while Rose and Deb were off, uh, we were uh, doing things with the widows on these motorbikes, uh, visiting the widows on motorbikes. Uh, we were in the hall and and Paul had said to me, okay, um, you have a Bible class ready for us. And I knew about that. And so we did a class and we did Luke chapter 15. At the end of that, there's, well, there's a hymn and a prayer to start with. And there's a hymn and a prayer at the end. And they said, you got to, you know, can you give us, you know, part two now? I said, sure, that's fine. We did Luke 16. Um, the end of that, he said, uh, would you close this session in prayer? And then we'll move on to the next section like, okay, I'm not sure what the next section is. I think we were going to go back to his place for dinner. I knew there was some lunch somewhere in there. Wasn't exactly sure, but I figured, okay, if I'm closing with prayer, this is kind of it. That's fine. So they sang a hymn, song of, uh, uh, from, they have a Christadelphian hymn book with both English and Swahili. Um, and then I said a prayer. So I was done. And he said, so now you have a, another, another class for us. I was like, I think these people want another class. We've been sitting here all day. It's been a couple hours. Um, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So at that point, I think I saw some older young people come in from school because school was now out. It was maybe three o'clock. I said, well, maybe they have something. And so they came up and they did a bit of a, a song and a dance thing. Then I did a class, him and a prayer. And he's like, so you've got another one for us? I'm like, well, are you sure these people want another one? And uh, he talked to them and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're very keen to learn and to to hear from God's word. It was amazing. So we did Four classes back to back to back to back with some entertainment in between. And then we went back to uh, Paul's place for for uh, for dinner. And uh, this is his wife, um, his youngest daughter, his another daughter here, Angel. She's one that runs a widow's program now in this area. Um, it's amazing. She she was at a, a youth retreat where Deb and James were talking about the different programs they were doing. And she went back and with Agape and Action's help has started um, a widow's program here in her own local area. And they were the ones that uh, Deb and Rose had been visiting. And then some of them had come to the compound here and they'd given Deb this chicken as a gift and Rose this basket here. Uh, my sister actually makes these and I bought one of these and, and brought it home for my mom. Um, you can see here, there is a building that looks a bit more solid brick. It's just under construction. Most of them live in these um, just literally mud huts. Um, here's the entertainment, uh, and this was just somewhat impromptu. It'll give you an idea of, of you know, what we saw and heard uh, a lot of. And keep an eye on this little boy. Uh, the, the children just from a young age want to pick up things. He's getting into it right here. Just 
in them to want to dance and sing. And just interesting here that they did they did four items i think <clears throat> and before this one they'd had just uh like a, a sort of a bongo drum kind of thing and they were tapping the side or tapping for the for the percussion um and then this these the young boys got up and they went over to this corner here and unlocked this thing and pulled out this speaker hooked up their iphone to it and played that music so it's just this sort of weird you know, you're in the middle of Africa and there's, you know, some mud huts and obviously people not very well off. And then there's this um, ability to to play this music uh, off their phone. It's this this really interesting contrast, I guess. Um, so then we were at, at Paul's place. This is uh, his compound. See, so a lot of the, the buildings are like this, just literally mud, mud hatched. And, you know, this might be where his daughter lives. There's another one where his, uh, his sons lived on the compound um, with their wives and children. Um, the motorbike is is ubiquitous. Uh, they're literally everywhere. Uh, at one point, this one rode off and came back. And on the back here was, um, you know, supplies. There was uh, like a um, case of bottled water and some other things that that we were to eat and to, to drink. So um, they would drink water from their bores and from the rain they collected. We didn't. While we were there, we only ever drank bottled water. It was never an issue. We always had enough. But I couldn't help but uh, capture this. This little goat had jumped up on this table that a few, you know, half hour before had um, was like a buffet table and we were serving ourselves uh, the, the food that was offered, which is a lot of rice. Um, there's uh, there's some fruit, uh, the, the, the pot of, of stew. Um, it was, the food was was totally fine. Um, but this little goat wanted to put on a show, so I had to capture this. We have a, we're having the goat show here at uh, Paul's place. Come on, do your tricks. There we go. There we go. Come on. He was do doing this tricks. all on his own. Uh, he was putting on a show before. Of course, as soon as I start filming, he gets all camera shy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well done. So then we um, we got back to Nairobi. Um, while we'd been there, um, Diane and Andy had been off in another area serving. Um, and we got all back together in Nairobi. We went out for some Western food. The first thing I ordered was a hamburger and French fries and a, a salted caramel milkshake. Um, so we enjoyed that. And then we went to the game park there in Nairobi. So this is just outside the city. It's a massive game park, you know, thousands of acres. And by game park, I mean, it's not a zoo. These animals are in the wild. Um, so we're here. Uh, Francis took us. The, the top of his van kind of pops up and you have this viewing area. So there we are. Uh, and you see all the animals in, in the wild. Uh, and we saw lots. It was we had a good we had a good day that way. But it's it's wild. They're not fed by man. They they're in the wild. So these two lions here, I don't know if you can see, they have um, blood on their snouts because we watched them take down a, a buffalo and start to eat it. It was actually a bit disturbing, but that's what happens in the in the wild, and that's that's what's there. So that was certainly a unique experience. Um, <clears throat> That evening, we went out to a, a well-known restaurant in the area it's called The Carnivore, which you can imagine what that's all about. So we had kind of one final evening together. Um, Izzy, Deb, and Andy left later that night, early Sunday morning, um, to head back to Australia. Diane Rose and I had uh, one more night there in Nairobi, and we got to go to the Nairobi Ecclesia for our last day in Kenya. Um, there's actually three ecclesias in Nairobi, but they all gathered here. This is the original one. Um, there's the, the podium at the front, you know, Brethren in Christ, the Christadelphians, Nairobi Ecclesia. Um, <clears throat> it was was just so great. They they love visitors. Um, the, the Nairobi is a big city. When you're in Nairobi, you feel like you could be anywhere in the world. Um, 
we did a Sunday school before them and then the exhortation. It was all in English, which was an interesting experience for me. It didn't have to be translated, although later some of them said it might have helped if it was translated. But many of them here are students. Uh, most of them have come to Nairobi from the rural areas. They're not born and raised in Nairobi. Um, and so they're well educated and they're used to interacting in English. Uh, while there, I was able to meet Brother Samuel, who I had met virtually on our Zoom classes. We run some Zoom seminars on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights here in Canada. And uh, through Brother Peter Wisniewski, uh, somehow Samuel got the link and he would join us. And when we're seven, eight o'clock here in, in Canada, it's like two, three o'clock in the morning there. And there's Samuel saying hello. So I'd seen him on the Zoom calls probably um, a dozen times. And I got to meet him in person. It was, it was great. And he actually presided for me for the memorial service. So that was very, very special. And uh, at the end, he asked me, we'd, we'd been working through the sem uh, parables, um, which we were also doing in our seminars. And he asked, I'd taken with me a little travel Bible, not my big regular Bible that I'd done some a bit of marking in. And he asked if I could have it. And it was an honor to, to leave that Bible for him. They're just so keen to learn and especially to, to be able to figure it out for themselves. And then I jumped on a plane Air, uh, Ethiopian Airlines, uh, a beautiful plane, very well. Um, you know, the staff were excellent. I went home from uh, Nairobi to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, then up to Frankfurt, and then back to Toronto. So just a couple of slides to finish here. <clears throat> we were blessed with rain. Pretty much everywhere we went, the rain seemed to follow us. And we kind of joked about it, but it was, it was a beautiful thing. Um, here's a couple of photos I took at the bottom here. This is at the youth camp, Majimoto Springs Youth Camp. They just set up these tarps or tents and they got underneath them when it rained. And then, you know, by the afternoon, they're out playing soccer, football on the, the field. Uh, it didn't really seem to, to make much difference, but we could see the greenness. Here's a road. This is again, before we got stuck, we went around this one. Uh, these other four pictures Rose took, I borrowed from her, where she just captured the, the joy of water, these these boys here just loving the rain. Uh, these two children here um, appreciating the water that's been supplied by the, the bores that have been dug by Agape in Action um, and the rain tanks that have been installed. And this slide here is just a, a collage of the amazing work that Agape in Action does. Um, you know, I was there, I was, I was there mostly as a teacher. I, I, did, a, I did a lot of classes and so on, but <clears throat> and how, you know, that's important to learn to read the Bible effectively and to, to make it, you know, your own to change your life. But this is life changing stuff here. Here's uh, this is at Godo um, hygiene kits being passed out. So we would make up these kits. All the supplies were ordered in ahead of time. And then each uh, pail or uh, uh, bowl, I guess, um, basin is filled with some soap, um, a, a small hand towel, toothpaste, um, toothbrush hygiene kits and there's they're passed out sort of one per family um there's widows baskets that are kind of the same but with supplies that are uniquely maybe maybe for widows so here they are going away from the gathering so <clears throat> they would have these events where the team would be there brothers and sisters would come from you know the region and then they would go home with something that's going to change their life uh, in a physical way um <clears throat> they also had blankets made for the widows here's diane this i wasn't here at this occasion but rose and diane went out and and handed out these blankets that had been made by brothers and sisters, I believe from Australia, and then taken to the widows. And that just is amazing. They had new mother's kits. So the the, the mothers with young children, um, it's very similar to the hygiene kits, but then, you know, with the, with the reusable diaper and some creams and that kind of thing. Um, here's Rose and Deb getting the the the, uh, the chicken from the, the widows in uh, there. Um, and a couple of pictures of the nutrition drink, which has just been a game changer. The, the three times a week, the children uh, at their school or at their, the home they're staying at um, have this drink that's a special formula um, that's full of nutrition and, and vitamins and all the essentials. And uh, it's just been a game changer for, for those children that now with uh, physical health and mental health, they can learn um, both in, um, things you know from school and about God. And the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's just um, just an amazing work. So that's just a collage of some of the things that we did um, on our on our mission trip. If you want to find more information, um, the website is uh, agapeanaction.com. Um, all kinds of things. The, it started just really just with child sponsorship. You know, you can sponsor a child so much per month. That provides them with food, a school uniform, so they can go to school um, and change these children's lives. 
Um, there's projects. If you're interested in the widows program or a building project, schools, homes, there's projects you can you can give your money to a, a certain project. Uh, there's gifts that you can provide. You can provide everything, anything from a soccer ball or a school notebook all the way up to a goat or a cow, um, and provide a family with uh, with a gift of hope. Um, I should say that 100% of the money that you give to the children or to the projects goes to them 100%. All the administration stuff and all that comes from a completely separate fund. And if, you're, if your heart is to, 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 to give in that area, that's fine too. It's a completely separate fund that looks after the administrative costs. But if you want to give to the kids, you want to give to the widows, um, you want to give to the schools, 100% of your money through Agape in Action goes to those pro those those things those people in those projects so um this is a site to go to if you have more questions and you want to get involved so um that's all i i have um if uh, thanks for watching this video you can reach out to me through this through this channel um if you like and i'll certainly ask more que answer quite more questions um or you can go straight to the to the website there so I'm going to I'm going to stop here. Those that are listening live will open up for um, for questions. Um, so thanks for sharing. I hope uh, spending this time with us. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, and as I say, some of my facts may not be 100 percent accurate, but that was my mission trip with Agape in Action from my perspective. And uh, I thank you for sharing it with me and uh, this time. And I pray for God's blessing upon you and your family and the work of Agape in Action. God bless.